I want to let everybody know um, in this series I'm doing for being over two and a half years overdue for birth with quintuplets, overdue for birth by two and a half years. Uh, I'm over three years pregnant. I got pregnant January 7, 2016, where kidnapping crimes were and falsifications of records were done on me and these babies as means to conceal what was a tort claim to Department of Defense. They were going to make it like look like I wasn't pregnant by cutting the babies out of me. They had somebody do this, kidnap me, and try to and falsify records and try to cut the babies out of me so that it would make me look crazy in the federal tort claim in the military tort claim I was doing. Okay, so um, that was witness tampering, of course, obstruction of justice, and it also was designed the what it would have done was um, conceal every single crime backwards that was done to me before the tort claim, both civilian and military sector. I've been a victim of severe crimes, MK Ultra, human trafficking, torture since. 2001 and the pregnancy um, crimes done to me uh, since 2016 are designed to not only conceal the tort claim um, issues on Department of Defense the fact that I'm being left in the military so many years past ETS ending time in service to conceal all the crimes and make it look like I'm out but I'm really in so that I just get no um, equal protection of the law at all and I'm not getting any in civilian sector either so that I'm totally enslaved and um, I get threatened every time I want to go for habeas corpus that I will be kidnapped and murdered they could kiss my ass I'm still doing habeas corpus they, they really can't think that I'm gonna give in to them I don't give in to terrorists I'm sorry okay so anyway um, I just thought that um, I'm, I got pregnant with an FBI agent's baby January 7, 2016. I loved him very much. I still have love for him. I don't know where the hell he's at. As far as the stuff with my sister, I'm going to get ready to perpetuate testimony. Hopefully a judge allows it. I'm requesting to perpetuate testimony before filing cases so that I can gain facts so I know what I need to do in particular cases. I want to depose many people, especially her, uh, my sister, and him. Um... Anyway, um, so I got pregnant January 7, 2016. By January 21st, um, a series of interstate commerce facilities, people who are like a, um, clinics and hospitals, they were beginning to falsify records about the babies, trying to claim I wasn't pregnant, trying to claim I was having a phantom pregnancy so they could do a a uh, baker act of some sort to try to paint me as crazy so they could cut the babies out of my womb and so that they could try to use that to say that nothing that I was complaining of in my federal tort claims had really happened of course everything happened and they were going to use all that to try to say I was crazy and then probably what I gathered was they were going to um, sell the babies drink the blood murder the babies because I've had the experience in 2005 when my babies were killed by VA agents and taken out of me okay now so there were a series of groups of interstate commerce facility providers meaning hospital people clinic workers ultrasound people that um, falsified records to conceal this pregnancy uh, the very first one was a woman named Kathy at Hope Clinic on January 21st where I went for an ultrasound uh, and she did a p-test of course I had many many I still have them many many p-tests that shown I was pregnant um, you could see the progression of I have pictures of my belly getting bigger and my family there's twins and triplets in the family so I knew um, you know because my stomach was so big that I most likely had a multiple pregnancy um, so I went to Hope Clinic um, in Oakland Park, Florida, uh, January 21st, 2016, and the woman began telling me, oh, you're having a phantom pregnancy, even before I took the P-test. She was trying to coerce me to believe I had a phantom pregnancy even before taking a P-test. Now, let me give you a little history on my um, background here. I do not have sexual intercourse 
hardly ever. I love the baby's father so much that I waited for him for a couple of years, and we had intercourse one time, January 7th, early in the morning, 2016. I was ovulating then. The ovulation was a little delayed because some trauma happened to me a couple of days before, you know, a victim of stalking and crimes, and um, it delayed the ovulation, and for all I know that I was thermal imaged, and they waited so my body temperature had risen, and they went in and, you know, I was made pregnant January 7, 2016. Um, before that, I hadn't had sex since September 4, 2012. And being spiritual, I listened to God tell me, don't, don't, you know, just don't wait to, you know, wait till you love somebody, that type of thing. So I did wait met the baby's father in 2014, 2016, he came back around, actually 2015, the end of 2015 he came back around, 2016 we got pregnant without going into those details of exactly how, then I'm going to save that for court, um, I knew it was multiple, went to the first place, like Hope Clinic, like I said, she began trying to coerce me into believing that I was not pregnant so that they could later remove these babies. And uh, I said to her, excuse me, ma'am, you're trying to tell me I'm having a phantom pregnancy when I've had and carried, a, I have a grown son, hell, ingrant, you know, I know when I'm pregnant. My All my home tests show two pink lines, like 20 home tests, I, I still have them actually. Yes, 2019, I still have the test from 2016. That I took before I went to Hope Clinic. And she says, okay, well, we'll do a test. She did one and said that I wasn't pregnant. Yes, I was pregnant, of course. I said, I'd like an ultrasound. Nope, she denied me the ultrasound because according to her, you have to have a positive pregnancy test to get the ultrasound. I'm sure I did have a positive test. She just wouldn't show it to me. So I left and went back February 8th and did another test. And she did the same exact thing. Committed crimes of falsifications of records and false statements and tried to tell me I had a phantom pregnancy. I said, ma'am, I do not have a phantom pregnancy. Stop the bullshit. Stop. Just stop. And I knew, I knew that she was committing crimes because I saw one of the government agents um, that followed me for years as a victim of MK Ultra organized stalking really, really bad. Repeat kidnappings and return to return me to peonage over and over and over and over and over and over and over since 2001. Bloodying kidnappings. Um, I was shot with poison pellet by a National Guard person and civilians. Terrible crimes have been done to me. I've been branded and burned on my leg with letter M. So that's just some of the crimes done to me. But anyway, um, I survived them and I'm well still mentally because I'm a psychology major. I made sure to put myself through psychology school because during the middle of the crimes uh, um, going on, I knew that the crimes would get worse because I wasn't getting any kind of help from um, equal protection of the law. I was No one would listen to me. I called the FBI, they'd hang up the phone on me. I'd call the Attorney General's office, they'd hang up the phone on me. Okay, only once the Attorney General's office helped me in the kidnapping and bloodying of 2004, my dad, who was a Mason, helped me and kept me alive. Okay, um, and the Attorney General then was Charlie Crist and his assistant, Mr. Dawson. The victims unit kept me alive. But after that, no help was there for me, ever. So, Hope Clinic falsified records, falsified statements to get me to believe I was having a phantom pregnancy, which I knew I wasn't. Come on, I've had a child already. My son's grown. I said, whatever. I went right to the store and bought a really expensive pregnancy test. 20 minutes later, took that test, went back down in front of her and showed her the P-test. Another P-test with double lines. I said, go ahead and call it a phantom pregnancy, ma'am. Okay, you're falsifying statements. And she didn't say nothing. I knew that she was told to do that to me because that man that follow me name his name is um oh god i'm having a problem here there's still trauma i'm mentally well but there's still a lot of trauma um there's a man that would follow me for years and in a blue and white car stephen h schnoffer 
Stephen H. Schnaufer was in one of the human trafficking events where I was almost sexually human trafficked by state agents up in Tallahassee. And they stole thousands from me and uh, of federal benefits and were trying to human traffic me sexually. And he was in that human trafficking attempt and he has been following me for years. Well, he, he, he had been following me around town right before I got pregnant. And like even if I go do a mammogram or go do anything with my body, even if I had a cold to go to the doctor, he'd be there he, in his car. Even on my jobs, he was at his car. He would stalk the hell out of me for years. Stephen H. Schnaufer was a psychologist. No, I didn't see him. I didn't need a psychologist. For years, people have been trying to make me look crazy to cover up something, and I couldn't figure out what the hell they're trying to cover up that I must know. Couldn't figure it out. Now I know, relative to 9-11, and just two days prior to 9-11, now I know why I can't get any help from the FBI, Justice Department, or anybody um, and they try to paint me they're trying to paint me as crazy their schemes and shit are not working because I'm trained well in investigations so and I've collected every piece of evidence you could imagine for crimes done to me and so i um, trained in forensics and psychology and paralegal uh, and investigations so they're having a hard time fucking with me and keeping me fucked with um, so, Hope Clinic falsified records. There was major, major kidnap attempts going on even when Hope Clinic was falsifying records January 21st, 2016 and February 8th, 2016. Okay? Uh, Stephen H. Schnaufer would continually follow me. My cat was stolen. Cat theft. Cat napped where they were luring me to try to go get the cat out to a dark, dark place way out in the woods. To, it was terrible. The kidnap attempts on me. Um, by February 10th, two days later, I went to Coral Springs Hospital, uh, Broward Health Coral Springs Hospital, and the doctor there, Dr. Fine, um, diagnosed me pregnant, but I got up to the ultrasound room, the two girls up there, um, Kimberly Carey, and then there was a student one, I don't know her name, wouldn't let me see the screen. Now, how you know that they're going to snatch babies is they don't let you see the screen. And this is relative to 2005 when babies of mine were murdered by VA agents and snatched out of me. Okay? And that's another story for another time. Similar fact evidence here. You will know if they're trying to snatch babies out of you if when you go to ask to see your screen of your babies, they, oh, there are no babies. And you're like, let me see the screen. Oh, no. You can't see the screen. Sorry. We're professionals and you're not. They're getting ready to try to snatch your babies out of you. Okay? That's satanic snatching of babies. That's attempts. That's the plotting. So, um, all the while they were putting a, a transvaginal probe up me. Um, because I was having some pain, I went for an ultrasound. Well, you will have pain as many babies as I had. I had sex tuplets. I mean, now I got quintuplets because they murdered one of the babies. So she sticks the probe up me, and she's real hard digging around. You're not supposed to do that. And she told the other girl, here, hold this probe in her while I go fix the pictures. I said, pictures? You said there were no babies, but I know there's babies, Okay. I know for a fact there's babies, so you're lying, and you won't let me see the screen either. So the other girl holds the probe, and um, she won't let me see the screen either. Get it fixed, the pictures. Well, uh, the other girl went to fix the pictures. This girl's holding the probe. She goes to take the probe out of me, this um, student tech, underneath, underneath Kimberly Carey tech. And a sack comes out like this big of blood but it was like an egg sack like a like a like a flesh egg sack with yellow in it and veins and and so i knew it was one of the babies well i thought i just had a miscarriage which no it was that she detached the baby when she was ramming that thing up me and the baby came out attached to the probe. I was so in shock that when I went back in the wheelchair, I tried to grab the baby off the blanket, and of course it just broke apart. I tried to take my baby with me. I wish the baby's daddy would have come with me. He was an FBI, he's an FBI agent, but he didn't come with me that night. And I told him we just had a miscarriage. I we don't know. I don't know if I'm still pregnant with other babies. I don't know. Well. 
after that, I went back to the hospital um, two days later. Well, let me go back. Or February 10th. That was February 10th when that one baby was murdered out of me. And a strange woman appeared. She was not part of the hospital. She walked around in boots and jeans and a red sweater. Then they put a lab coat on her. She kept walking back and forth when I was there. They put a lab coat on her. I don't know who she was to this day. And she started to say, oh, you have tumors on you. And you have, she tried to make excuses for what my babies were. And of course, she says, come back in two days. Even though you had a miscarriage, I went back in two days. She looked at me and said, she came back. I'm sorry there are no tumors on you. Straight face, because she knew what they were doing to me. And she says, just know that you don't have any tumors on you. Okay? And then she left. This is February 13th now, two days later, to go check the um, HCG levels. They were claiming, all oh, your HCG levels are too low. I says, no, because if you look at the amount of weeks in the chart that they have online, your HCG could be zero to something at a certain amount of weeks and then shoot up all the way up. Well, they were falsifying the HCG levels on me so that it would look low, so it looked like I had no babies. Anyway, but several charts show that in HCG levels early in pregnancy, some women don't have high levels very a couple weeks in. They just don't. Four weeks in, five weeks in, it'll start to change and double and triple. Now, so February 13th, I went back to a Dr. Lye at uh, Broward Health Coral Springs Hospital, and he started to try to tell me I had a phantom pregnancy too. I said, excuse me, uh-uh. I said, go ahead and take my HCG. So the HCG was raised up a little higher. I said, I do not have a phantom pregnancy. I have a real pregnancy. I can show you all the pink lines. Stop trying to do crimes on me to try to conceal um, case issues in my military case. Just stop that. So he put his head down. And he knew he was guilty. And he said, okay, fine. I just, he admitted that he lied. I just don't understand why your HCG is so low. I says, doesn't matter if it's low or what, because it's still very early in the pregnancy. So with that, I didn't stay there long. I went back home. He told me to come back very soon. I didn't because I knew they were going to try to snatch these babies out of me. I knew there was a kidnapping plan. I told the baby's dad by text. I have all those texts. They're planning to kidnap these babies out of me and call me crazy like I never had any as a means to witness tamper and obstruct justice in the military tort claim that would expose all the crime the military tort claim would expose war crimes kidnappings on me repeat kidnappings horrible horrible crimes done to me shooting me with a poison pellet 2012 so um 2003 war crimes many crimes afterwards shooting me with poison pellet 2012 many crimes after that and all the way into me filing tort claim finally after being enslaved and tortured and repeat kidnapped and many attempts of druggings on me. I've never done a drug in my life. Never will. No pot. I can't stand the smell of pot. Nothing. I don't drink alcohol. So I waited until I had another um, issue of pain in my belly. Um, it wasn't the only pain in my belly. Somebody caused a loss of amniotic fluid in me by committing attempts of kidnapping on me and a theft, attempt of theft of my military gear. So that caused a trauma of losing a lot of water and diarrhea, which I thought, I knew in between that I was still pregnant. Me and the baby's dad concluded, okay, you're probably still pregnant with the other babies. And I have every text that we've done since that date, since even before pregnancy, when he came back in my life. And um, I don't know why he's not around. Anyway, so February, I'm sorry, March 13th into 14th, I went back to the hospital for that diarrhea loss of amniotic fluid from the crimes that somebody was doing to try to kidnap me the day before. It was trauma done to me and theft of my military gear attempts they were trying to do to, you know, if they steal military stuff slowly, like they just mugged me and stole my IDs. Then they eventually say, oh, she wasn't in the military at all, and she's just a liar, and oh, she was crazy, and oh, this, and oh, that. Well, they don't get away with that with me. Okay. So, 
Fe uh, March 13th and 14th, Dr. Omatsi sees me in Broward Health Coral Springs. I go back again and for the diarrhea and loss of amniotic fluid and no tissue came out, nothing. The babies were still there. And he goes and says, oh, you don't have any babies in you. I said, stop the madness. Just stop it. Okay, just stop. Stop. Stop that. And he's like, well, we can't find any because they sent me up for another ultrasound. And the next tech, I don't know what her name is. I have to look in the record. She did the same thing. Oh, there are none. And they will turn the babies to little tiny dots. When I got the records afterward, they were little tiny. They turned the babies, the frequency down so low. One didn't even have the sound on. If you don't have the sound on in an ultrasound, you're not going to get a picture because there's sound waves that create the picture. So they again falsified the records now he claimed you don't have any babies in you really so from one doctor a few weeks ago who diagnosed me pregnant twice you're gonna now claim there's no babies uh, -uh. just stop stop trying to commit crimes like the other techs are doing just stop that so I, he goes I said well maybe it's hiding I was joking with him you know cuz I know that they were trying to plan a torture to try to say I was crazy I know that and snatch the babies I began to dig during this time many doctors in the United States were telling many women there's forums of women uh, and what do you call those blogs discussing how they were told by the doctors there's nothing in their womb and they go oh but we need to now book a DNC Dr. Omatsi did the same thing with me we now, we now need to book a DNC wait a minute stop the music I said I even told baby's daddy. I got on the phone with them the next day. If there's nothing in there, why would you be trying to book a DNC if there's nothing in there? Don't fuck with me. Don't screw with me because it, it ain't going to happen. And immediately, I never went back to Broward Health. And, of course, I didn't book the DNC because I'm not going to murder my babies. Well, I began to read how many women did have the DNC where they were really pregnant and number two how many women just waited with their husbands and of course they knew they were pregnant and out came a baby months later okay so um, you know the babies were born after the doctors would lie to them so there was a huge 2016 huge huge um, events of fetal kidnappings out of the mother's wombs by lies Okay, by the doctors and techs. Now, and I did research online to find it going on. So I told the baby's dad, this is what they're doing to me. Baby's daddy didn't take it too seriously. I don't know. I don't want to go into what he is doing or has done in his crimes of, a, of keeping me pregnant over two and a half years. They are crimes. It is child abuse. Title 18, Section 1841. Unborn Victims of Violence Act and um, uh, Article 919, Section 119 of the UCMJ Uniform Code of Military Justice, since I'm still in the military. These are crimes against babies. No one will allow me birth. Nobody. Everybody covered and concealed my babies even after I was kidnapped on May 23rd to May 27th, 2016. There were many, many, many more attempts on me, but I'm trying to go slow right now from... Um, provider to provider to show you know every step of the way how many concealed these babies to form the kidnapping plan and on March 13th and 14th March 14th of Dr. Romatsi like I said I went to the last time I was at Coral Springs Hospital the last tech that said I had no babies and they wrote down, oh, there's nothing in the uterus, there's no babies, but we need to do a DNC. And I said, why would you need to do a DNC if there's nothing there? I ain't coming back to you, and I ain't going for no DNC. Right, well, guess what? After the kidnapping, way after the kidnapping, in, that happened May 2016, interstate with guns and them trying to cut the babies out of me in Youngstown and Boardman, Ohio, and Cleveland, Ohio, the VA, um, kidnapping me really bad I'll get into that I found after the kidnapping this is a plan in writing um, by Dr. Omatsi it was buried in the ultrasound records that I got those records well many months after the kidnapping babies were almost seven months in me at that time 
and this is where he set up a um, EDC was to be 414 2016 April 14 2016 there was to be an ED a EDC estimated date of confinement in medical terms means you take the babies out and birth them you know but that was coded language for estimated date of confinement to Caprice Nicolette Manos to kidnap her why do I know that because I was kidnapped afterward a month after okay and um, uh, he put down that the date of the babies would be 35 weeks on 414 you can see it right here he put that down I put this all over Facebook a while ago now they were saying the babies were, were 20 weeks in me on February 13th how are they 20 weeks in me when I only had sex one time in four years January 7 2016 and they were saying I was 20 weeks pregnant February 13 2016 I wasn't 20 weeks pregnant they were falsifying records really bad number one to not only make that baby's dad believe I was sleeping with men slandering me so that it would push him away or he could get away with saying they were someone else's because I think that's more the case um, since of course the crimes he's doing now by not helping me FBI agent uh, not helping me leaving me pregnant making sure nobody gives me birth and trying to say that the babies didn't exist at first after he knew they existed and he was with me seeing the two lines and I've got all the text messages with discussions of our babies and we met planning the college of the babies and before the kidnapping of course and when he left me he left me right after this was formed and he left me a week before a the most severe attempt at kidnapping unsuccessful attempt in South Florida was 4 14 2016 the same exact date that they had planned there to be one 4 14 2016 okay so March third. March 13th and 14th with Dr. Omatsi 2016 he wrote a big plan in writing to kidnap these babies while falsifying records saying there were no babies in me so they have triple sets of records each date first saying I'm pregnant then saying I'm not pregnant on March 14th he said I'm not pregnant I'm not pregnant you need it you need it but you need a DNC well that's a contradiction you don't have a DNC if you're not pregnant Okay, so I knew that they were trying to kidnap the babies out of me. He goes and secretly writes on that date to go ahead and kidnap me and the babies for 14, 2016 and puts down that I would be estimated 35 weeks for, of uh, pregnancy. Excuse me? For delivery, 4D. Um, no, I wouldn't have been 35 weeks pregnant on 414 from being pregnant January 7, 2016. Okay. And they were doing that to falsify the records so that they could snatch these babies out of me, fetal, so that they could, oh, sell them, eat them. I don't know what they were going to do with them, but I surely wouldn't have been uh, 35 weeks pregnant on 4-14-2016 from first having gotten pregnant January 7, 2016. Okay, so that was April 14th. 2016 where one of the restaurants had somebody stick crap in my food and I know my nose was running and white shit was coming out and my baby started to come out of me and I don't give birth naturally and I'm telling you they felt like they were just right there ready to come out at about four months pregnant so um, so let's maybe let me count the weeks so January 7th February 7th March 7th that would be two months um, April 7th, three, I was about three and a half months pregnant, okay, when this asshole wrote down that I would be 35 weeks pregnant when they were going to snatch them out of me. 4-14-2016, somebody from a chain of foods, Wendy's, put something in my foods because I noticed many people started to call me crazy to customers. Yeah, you, I would go there to eat and, and the people behind the counter would start telling randomly customers that I was crazy. I'm like, and they'd come up to me saying, why are they saying that you're crazy when I don't even know them for or you for them to say that to me? So somebody was plotting to make me look and smear me around town so that I would look like I was crazy so that after the babies were kidnapped and when I was getting murdered that they would say I was just a crazy woman. Okay. Well, um, on 414, I began to have severe uh, pains birth pains I guess labor 
My son was C-section. I can't have natural birth. Never could. Diagnosed by his birth doctor, my son's birth doctor years ago. And um, I still can't give natural birth. These babies were miscarrying out of me. And I got a friend and went to Broward Health Imperial Point, not Coral Springs, but Imperial Point Hospital. Wasn't there 15 minutes before I was called in for um, vitals. Went into a room, began to change into my gown, and a doctor, Aronovic, comes in, opens the curtain in front of me and my friend, and says, Caprice, what are you doing here? I'm like, how the hell does he know my name? So well, I've never been here before. What are you doing here? I says, I'm, I'm having miscarriage pains really bad. It's real bad, real strong cramping. He says, you're not pregnant. Get out of here. And if you say that you're pregnant, I'm going to baker act you. And you will. You have to leave right now. And there I was. That's patient dumping, threats. Okay, extortion. Um, there I was in so much pain. With it, it felt like a baby's head was going to come out because the babies then were very small, and it probably could have passed through me if I really, you know, didn't try to keep it in. By that time, the fear was so great of being kidnapped. And exactly what I told the baby's dad was happening, okay? They were trying to say I was crazy or paint me crazy so that they could snatch me and rip these babies out. To cover up all the military tort claim stuff, war crimes done to me. And I still couldn't figure out why all these crimes are being done to me from 2001 until now. Yes, I saw something prior to 9-11 two days prior that did have something to do with the trade centers. Yes, I reported it to the FBI. Yes, the FBI has been treating me like shit ever since and not giving me any help at all or the Justice Department or anything. Okay, so it didn't dawn on me until after I was kidnapped um, May 23rd to 27, 2016. I had to really think of what it was and why even after that kidnapping where they tried to rip these babies out, more kidnap attempts, I had to flee to Gainesville, Florida. Why did they keep wanting to do this to me? Even recent kidnap attempts. Recently, January 5th, another kidnap attempt, and it's only March. Okay? Why so many? Why try to human traffic me sexually? Why try to drug me many times? Why shoot me? Why steal all my money to become an attorney? The Department of Education stole Pell Grants and loans. Why every school shut me out? They all work towards a culmination to try to make it look like I was some mentally ill or challenged person that never went to school, that didn't have any work or jobs, and um, through the blacklistings, I still keep working. I don't fail to thrive, and that's the problem they're having with me. They think, they thought that if they could strip me of my jobs and blacklist me every two weeks, I get fired for no reason. So I had to turn to labor and construction. And even in that, just weeks ago, somebody else tried it there. I fought and I got to keep my stuff, my job. But on the average, if I go to a regular job, I'll be fired in two weeks by the time the state gets a new hire report and told we're not going to tell you why. We don't have to. So. Yeah.